Hey guys, today we're going to take you through the steps we took to build the best rustic cedar farmhouse table you'll ever see that can sit up to eight large people or ten small people. Anyways, you be the judge. We just got back from the hardware store and when I pick out wood there, this happens to be a western red cedar, what you want to look for are good straight pieces and you can usually just get a sight line on them from one end and take a look. These have come with a rounded factory edge so we're going to be straightening those out. But I like cedar for a project like this because it's got a great grain density and it handles humidity really well so it's going to stay straight for us. What we did was um, lined it up, we squared it up and by doing that we ran one side through a jointer and um, then we ran the, of course, the other side through a table saw because the joiner is going to give us a true edge to run against the fence of the table saw for the other one so that we have nice square and tight joints when we put this together. What do you think? Should we glue this up as one panel or should we do it in sections? So what we were talking about was if we want to glue the whole four foot, is it four foot or 40 inches? 40 inches. This is 40 inches. Glue this whole 40 inch section up or glue it up in smaller sections because we know that we have a 20 inch planer. Most people in their garage don't have a 20 inch planer. They're using a bench top planer, typically. Which is which gonna be 12 or 13 inches. 12 or 13 inches. So when you're at home, make the section according to the size of your planer. And we're gonna go ahead and do this in sections so that we can plane all of it to the same thickness. And then we're gonna do a secondary glue up where we push all of them together. So we'll be gluing three panels, three panels, two panels, and then we'll glue the whole thing up in three joints afterwards. And we only have to worry about leveling out three joints, basically. And the good news is, is that we're at a sandpaper company, so if there is any unevenness right here, we can shape it and take it down with sandpaper, and we'll walk you through the steps of using the different grids to take this down to where it's perfectly flat. There's a lot of ways that you could join these up. Um, when I first started, I used pocket holes underneath you don't have to use that way, that is a good way. Um, all you really need is glue to adhere to the side whenever you clamp it up. Um, another way to help with any twist or bow in the board is to biscuit joint. We're also not doing that today. We're trying to keep it really DIY friendly for where anybody could do this at their house or garage. So we're just gonna use the boards that we jointed up and some glue and some clamps. And glue is stronger than nails and stronger than screws. So glue is stronger than wood, actually. So once it makes its joint, it will not break on the glue joint. If it broke anywhere, it would break somewhere in the wood, not on the glue joint. We had an off cut from the board that we put in here as a spacer. So when we clamp it, it's more likely to dent this than our actual tabletop. We don't want it to press into it, especially since it's a softer. Since this is cedar and it's softer, we do want to put some sort of pad in between the clamp and the, because the iron clamp is a lot stronger than the wood. I like to wipe the glue off from the squeeze out while it's still fresh. Um, the main reason being, it's to me, it's easier to take off now with a damp rag. When glue dries, it's kind of hard to get off and uh, it can prevent any kind of sealer or stain from penetrating the wood. So it's a new day. We came back and we unclamped our glued up sections and now we're gonna start prepping to glue those three sections together. First, we got a couple uneven uh, high spots. It's not real bad, but there's a few little ridges and we're gonna run that through uh, a joiner because we need to start with a flat side before we run it through a planer. Um, again, these are under 20 inch sections. Before we run it through the joiner, I'm gonna mark it uh, pretty heavy with a pencil. And the reason I'll mark it with a pencil is whenever we're running it through the joiner, you'll see which uh, high spots you're taking off first. Once all the pencil line is gone, you know that you've got a nice flat surface to work with. Here we have the luxury of working with some larger tools than we're used to working with, specifically a 20 inch jointer, which is gonna flatten this for us for the sake of time. At home, we would have made this in 12 inch sections so that we could have run each side respectively through our lunchbox planer and that would have given us a fairly flat surface to work with. Definitely something you could be proud of after it's put together. All right, so we have our pieces out of the joiner and out of the planer, and we have two, two of the three panels. We're gonna glue up two of them right now and let them sit 
for about 30 or 45 minutes while the glue sets up initially and then we're going to put the other piece on to get our full width of tabletop. The reason I'm doing that is to make sure that we're not trying to wrestle two seams at the same time while we're gluing it up and it'll make for a very nice flat lay and a really flat glue up. What we're doing right here is we're going to cut this lumber so that we can start laminating pieces together to make two pedestals that are going to be the base of our farm table. Once we have the top glued up, we want to put it onto a nice base, and so we're going to make two pedestals that are going to be tied together with a trestle and aprons. The you know, rectangle has four sides, so we're going to put three on each one, so we're actually going to make 24 pieces because we're going to be making eight pieces for two rectangles. We're making the individual legs of our rectangular pedestals, and I'm making them by laminating two by sixes together. Rather than buying an actual six by six and cutting it, there's a couple reasons we didn't do that. One, you have to have a pretty large miter saw to cut miters into a true six by six. Two, laminating pieces together actually makes a more stable piece of wood when you are finished because there's less internal pressure. So when we have all these cut, they'll be easier to miter and tailor the fit that we want. Then once they're glued together, we will cut them at a 45 degree angle to miter them together. All right, we have all the miters cut for the cedar legs. This is just one side. We have another side cut up. We wanted to dry fit it to see how the joints fit. They fit pretty good. We're gonna glue it up, shoot it in with some nails, and let it dry before we attach it. For all intents and purposes, this is one of our pedestals and we will support it also laterally with a decorative X-brace that's going to be made out of a 4x4 and it's going to be one end of our table. We'll make an identical one for the other end of our table, attach them with aprons and then our tabletop will attach to the aprons. Our miters aren't completely perfect. Um, it's a pretty deep cut so it could be the blade, it could be the way we were holding it or the wood. Uh, there's always cracks, so we're going to fill that right now with some uh, wood filler. And just so you know, we're using Famo wood. It is a solvent-based wood filler. And I've used it before and I like it. It's sustainable, so we really like that. Yeah. So we got all our cracks puttied. Uh, most of it's dry. You want to go ahead and let the putty set up. Uh, you can, depending on what you're using, read the back of the label to make sure it's good and dry before you start sanding. So it's pretty smooth in most of the spots because we prepped it, but now I'm gonna go ahead and sand starting with 120 grit uh, gator discs. So whenever you use a circular disc, it's hard to get in really tight corners, so I'll use the micro zip and I'm still staying with the uh, 120 grit. Again, I'm staying with 120. Uh, I've got a pretty sharp edge right here. If I leave that, um, you have potential for tear out or just some of your wood splintering off. I'm gonna break it over just like a real light sand all the way around. Now that we have these pedestals completely sanded up and looking good, what we're going to do is we put in some, good Lord, we cut some X's or some beams to be the X for, that's going to be inset inside of these pedestals. And these are cut at an angle, and all we did was scribe out the angle, hold it up to it, take a pencil line, take it out, cut the corresponding angle. In this case, it was 45 and a half and, oh, I'm sorry, 47 and a half and 42 and a half degrees to compensate for our rectangle. And now we've dry fitted them in, and we just traced with a pencil some lines here and here, and we're gonna take these over to the miter saw and cut a half lap joint into them so we can join these together in a solid X. Okay, we're about to make this half lap joint in this and before I do I'm going to actually mark down to where halfway is on this and I'm going to set the depth stop on this saw so that it can't go any farther than that line. You'll notice that I have a sacrificial fence attached to the actual fence of this miter saw and that's so that I can push my stock out from here because when making a half lap joint when you push through the various cuts the rotation of the blade would cause an upsweep in the back of the cut if it was against the actual fence. So by bringing out the stock, in this case it's a three-quarter piece, we'll make sure that the blade makes a complete pass through the stock so that we get a flat cut.
Okay, now that we have the bottom of this sanded, um, we're going to turn it over really soon and we're going to sand the top of it through a progression of sanding. We're going to go from 120 up to 220, but in between, of the, in between those coats, we're going to paint this with a, uh, an age accelerator that's made by Verithane. Here we are on our cedar tabletop and we've decided to put a routed edge around it, especially with the wood that's a little softer like cedar. It's kind of nice to break the edge of it with a chamfer because not only is it more comfortable to rest your hands and arms on across it, it's going to make the grain a little stronger, give it less surface or more surface so less ability to chip or tear out later down the road. And a route also is a really clean look for a tabletop. We also put, we put a half inch route on the tabletop and we put a quarter inch route on the or chamfer rather with the router on the farm base, the X base of the farm base, just to keep it aesthetically in keeping with one another. What I'm going to do to start finishing the cedar table is to put this weathered wood accelerator, it's an age accelerator made by Verithane on it, and it's going to react with the tannins in the wood and it's going to turn it a gray color and make it look like it's been outside for a while. It's going to be the first step in our finish. Afterwards, I'll sand on it a little bit and add a stain. I like to add two coats of this. It takes about an hour to dry. You can add a second coat and let it dry overnight and it's going to have a dramatic effect on the way the wood looks. Right now we are preparing to our trestle here to attach to our pedestals and I'm going to do this two ways. On the bottom of our pedestal where no one will see, I've actually drilled pocket holes. These are extremely easy and you can pick up a pocket hole jig at any hardware store and these are going to attach it to the pedestal base where they won't be seen. However, on top I don't want any visible fasteners so I'm going to use a biscuit joiner to align, to set this in place and it will align it flush with my pedestal. And all you have to do, I've already marked it for alignment, you turn it on. I'll put the corresponding slot onto the pedestal and this will align it up top flush and the screws will hold it in place. And so with both of these biscuit slots drilled, all this little wafer this biscuit does is help us to align flush. And we will drill in with pocket holes from the bottom and with glue this, this trestle will connect to the other base and be perfectly aligned. I'm using a 60 grit sponge here. Now my biscuit slot that we just made is on the other side that you can't see right now. But what I'm doing is roughing up the spot since I pre-stained all this. I'm roughing up the spot where the glue is going to go so that the glue will adhere to the wood and this will help us get it in place. Glue doesn't stick to stain usually so I'm just using a rough grit to remove the stain quickly where this is going to go. To finish this off, I used a spray polyurethane. I like it because that only saves time, but it's easy to apply. You can use a sprayer or you can buy a can of spray. These screws were smaller in diameter than the holes we were going through by a good bit to allow for movement on the tabletop when it's attached. It's simply screwed into the apron and the tabletop and the pedestals on the sides. It took very little time and only required a drill. Here we are with our farm table. It's been a lot of fun to build this. I really like the way it's turned out. I love the rustic finish and the aged appearance. And I really like the lines of it. I think it's a really good mix between classic and modern for farm table. Hopefully we've been able to show you that you can build this um, in a number of ways with any different number of tools. I really enjoyed this build myself. Um, it is rustic, but I learned a lot from Jeremy as far as the finish goes. And then it was really fun to team up with Jeremy and Gator Finishing on this project. If you have any questions about this build, check out GatorFinishing.com and um, check out the plans. See how we did it. We ain't scared of nobody. Five inch. Here we go.